Thanks for joining me in another video. Today we're in New York and we're going to be talking about 800 volt electric vehicles and the Tesla supercharging network. We're going to be charging up a Kia EV6 using the Magic Dock. Okay, let's plug it in. We're currently at 30% and it looks like we're maxing out at 42 kilowatts. That's weird, this car charges well over 200 kilowatts. Why is it charging so slow? Well, let's get into it. With what seems to be an ever-increasing number of auto manufacturings moving over to the NAC standard, there have been two major holdouts, Hyundai and Kia. It's likely that these two have been hesitant to make the move based on how they build their battery packs and how the supercharging network is configured. Due to these differences, achieving seamless compatibility with the NAC standard may require some additional effort. This is due to the different voltages that the Tesla supercharger network and Hyundai and Kia's battery packs operate at. So far, Tesla has always built their vehicles on a 400 volt platform. Every one of their packs has a nominal voltage from 350 to 450 volts depending on the pack. Because of this, superchargers were only designed to be able to charge 400 volt cars. If you look at the output rating on a supercharger, it maxes out at only 500 volts. Hyundai and Kia have built up their eGMP platform on an up to 800 volt architecture, which requires a significantly higher voltage to be able to charge up. If you look at some newer chargers at Electrify America or EVgo, you'll see that they support a huge range of voltages and even go as high as 1,000 volts. This gives them the ability to charge any car built today. So, how is this car even charging at all? Enter the DC to DC boost converter. When manufacturers develop these cars, they have to face the reality that there are some fast chargers that only support 400 volt cars, even outside the Tesla network. They couldn't just make their cars incompatible with these chargers, as that'd be pretty confusing for the consumer. So they installed an onboard device which is able to boost up the voltage and allows you to charge. Only problem is they designed the converters for charges like this, this, and this. The common denominator here is that they're all slow chargers. The boost converters in the cars are only capable of about 50 kilowatts of output to the car since they must boost the voltage from about 400 volts to 800 volts. The Tesla superchargers are more than capable of charging their cars up to 250 kilowatts and using the Magic Dock they can charge out up to 150 kilowatts. They just can't get these speeds on these non-Tesla 800 volt cars. This isn't just an issue with Hyundai and Kia EVs, Lucid is in the same exact spot. Their Wonder Box is only capable of 50 kilowatts as well. So now that everyone is moving over to NAX, what does that mean for these 800 volt cars and Tesla superchargers? Well, the good news is that the new NAX connector supports 800 plus volt charging. This connector is both forward and backward compatible with existing Tesla cars. It's just slightly longer to give extra surface area for power to flow. Though it still doesn't mean anything for the network, and the new supercharger installations that Tesla is rolling out today still can't charge an 800 volt car without that onboard boost converter. However, Tesla has hinted that the Cybertruck will be using an 800 or 1000 volt battery architecture, so we'll have to support it with a decent first party solution. After all, how bad would it be if you bought a Cybertruck and the fastest you could charge it at a supercharger would be at 50 kilowatts? Tesla has three things that they need to accomplish fast for widespread adoption of NACs. Task 1. They need longer charging cables. Task 2. They need to get these chargers speaking CCS. If non-Tesla's are going to be sold next year with a NACs to CCS adapter, these chargers need to be able to communicate with the cars. This means Tesla will need to get powerline communication rolled out to their network, and not just to these prototype sites with the Magic Docks. Task 3. They need to be able to charge cars up to 1,000 volts. I don't know if that means they need to fully replace their back-end equipment, or if they can just install boost converters on site to do the work. But if they want to get all the manufacturers on board, they need to support these high-voltage cars. This needs to happen not only at their version 3 sites, but their older version 2 sites as well. People aren't going to know which ones they can and can't charge at based off the version. On another note, not related to Tesla superchargers, a new joint venture charging network is being developed. This group includes General Motors, BMW Group, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz Group, and Stellantis. Their goal is to install at least 30,000 high-powered chargers which feature both CCS and NAX connectors. The first of the stations are scheduled to open in summer of 2024 in North America. This joint venture project is similar to the Ionity charging network in Europe. I'm always happy to hear about the expansion of charging stations. I just hope this will be more reliable than networks like Electrify America. 
We'll have to see how Tesla will address these issues and what they have planned for the supercharging network as we start to see the addition of NACs on other electric vehicles. If you're unfamiliar with NACs, make sure to check out my Supercharging the Future video for some more details about the upcoming changes to the EV landscape. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. Have an EV I can review? Email me at info at kaizev.com. And check out my updated website for more EV resources at kaizev.com. That's all for now and happy charging. So we're gonna start our session with our phone. Charge your non-Tesla. And let's see what stall we're at. Around stall 3D. Let's charge here. It's giving us the prompts. Okay, 3D. So I'm unable to take out the magic dock. I have to initiate a charge Oop. with the app first. So unlock adapter. Okay, I heard a click. <laughs> I'm not following directions. So you have to push it in first. Okay, now my charging port. Just... All right, now we plug it in. All right, there, now I heard the click. Waiting for the key V6 to start. Mm -hmm. Char Charging started, all right. All right, let's let check inside and see how fast we're charging. 